I'm not even able to fit all of the books in the shot. Hi guys, it's Kaz, and today I'm here with my May wrap up. 12 books and two short stories. This is the most amount of books that I've read in a single month this year. Oh my gosh, I'm missing a book as well. Add, add another book to that list. There were a few readathons that happened throughout the month. The Bad of Books 13.0, the Crush Your TBR, and the Rib Sat readathons. And obviously that really helped with a lot of my reading this month. So, what did I end up reading? First of all, I finished listening to the audiobook of The Power of One by Bryce Courtney. This is about a boy named PK, and it pretty much follows him from quite young until a little later on into his life. His dream is to become the welterweight champion of the world, and we kind of follow him through his ups and downs. I did enjoy it as an audiobook, but I found that there were quite a few times throughout the book where there was a lot of description and explanation behind some sort of, not really boring, but just kind of mundane things. I saw Pose. And during those parts, I often found myself losing interest and zoning out of the audiobook, which made things a little bit tricky. And I wasn't particularly happy with how things ended. It was kind of like a satisfying moment for the character, but it was... I don't know, just not the direction I was hoping for. But despite those things, I did really like the journey that our main character went on. Uh, he really did meet some very fascinating and interesting characters, and I enjoyed meeting a lot of them. There were some really emotional moments in this book as well. I'm not entirely sure what to rate this book, to be honest. I'm leaning towards about a 3.5 stars for this book. I really do recommend this book, I just don't think it's quite for everybody. And I'm not sure if my experience would have been any different if I had read it. I don't really think so, because I did like the audiobook and the person who voiced it did a really good job. I also read Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. This is one of the books that I had to read for my gothic literature course at university, and I gave this one about a 3 out of 5 stars. The main character, Mary, her mother dies, and she's sent to live with her aunt and her uncle at Jamaica Inn. There's a bit of mystery behind the inn and her uncle, because no one really comes to the inn. Another one where I had kind of mixed feelings. Some aspects I really liked, some aspects I didn't find very exciting. The mystery in this novel and the things that do go on that you kind of learn about later on are quite intense and I wasn't really expecting it but at the same time I found that there were a lot of descriptions which kind of slowed down the pace a little bit because it's in this more setting and the character is very new to that kind of environment so she's really explaining things a lot which like I mentioned it kind of took away from it um, and slowed the pace down a little bit. I don't have really many feelings about the characters either I really didn't connect with any of them but this wasn't a bad book at all and I know that a lot of people do prefer Rebecca by the same author so I think at some point I will end up picking up Rebecca and seeing what I think of that one. Then I read The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler, a detective fiction story and I ended up giving this one a 4 out of 5 stars. Private investigator Philip Marlowe is on this case to figure out who is blackmailing this particular man but the case ends up being a lot more complex than he initially thinks. I think the thing that I really liked about this was the writing. I'm not sure in particular what it was about the writing that I enjoyed, but I think it worked really well with this kind of novel. It was descriptive, but not overly so, and there was a bit of wit in it as well, which made things a little more humorous. I quite enjoyed the main character, and a lot of the other characters that he meets were very interesting. They're not characters I like, but they... I don't know what other word to use apart from interesting, honestly. I was just pleasantly surprised with this one. Really glad that this was the last book that I was reading for my course. Kind of left it on a really high note, which was awesome. Next, I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albatali. This is a book that I received for review, and I will be doing a video review of this one very, very soon, hopefully in the next month. Because of that, I don't want to go into too much detail about my thoughts. This is about Simon Spear, who is emailing this boy named Blue. Now, he doesn't know who Blue is. He just knows that they go to the same school and one day he forgets to log out of his email and someone sees the messages going back and forth between Blue and Simon and then they use it and they use this to blackmail Simon. This was a wonderful read. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was hilarious and heartwarming. I gave this one four and a half out of five stars. I definitely recommend it. I also read volumes five and six of Death Note by Tsukumi Oba, the last two volumes in the series, at least of the Black Editions. I ended up giving volume five three and a half out of five stars and volume six four and a half out of five stars. I wasn't sure how this series was going to end. <sighs> mm-hmm mm -hmm. intense crazy I loved it I love this whole series as a whole the manga series I definitely recommend it and I've just recently started watching the anime series as well I'm only about 10 episodes in but also liking that one I think I do prefer it in this form though I also read Cinderella by Charles Perrault this is the illustrated version by Camille Rose Garcia and I love her works 
so much. They are just gorgeous. I love her artistic style. It's kind of creepy and dark. And then the mix of the illustrations and the manipulation of typography is just stunning. I think it really is a wonderful reading experience. These books are so beautiful. I've also read Snow White and I do have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland right here, which I will be reading at some point, hopefully soon, because I want to read that and Through the Looking Glass. I definitely recommend these. These are so beautiful. I gave this one a five out of five stars because it was an enjoyable read and an absolutely stunning book. Above the Fold by Peter Yeldon. This was sent to me by For Pity's Sake and this is a historical novel set during World War II. This follows Luke Elliot and Claudia Marsden who kind of come into each other's lives and they start to fall for each other but the war ends up ripping them apart. Luke is set on being a journalist and when an opportunity arises he takes it. I really really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. There was also a really interesting set of characters. Quite a few of them I liked but all of the characters were quite flawed and I felt that a lot of their decisions were quite realistic although in some cases I didn't always agree with it I kind of understood why I was really able to empathize with them pretty much but then there were some characters which were just infuriating there is this one character that just really reminded me of Dimitri from the Bronze Horseman if you've read that book you know how infuriating Dimitri is and there was just this one character in here as well it's just like you're an awful human being you are an awful human being. But it was heartwarming and heartbreaking. But yeah, so glad to have had the opportunity to read this one and I'll probably be doing a review of this one at some point as well. Next I listened to the audiobook of A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I'm not going to give this one a rating because at some point I will be rereading this book in physical book form. I don't think that listening to the audiobook of A Tale of Two Cities as a first reading was a very smart thing for me to do. Just the translation of a classic with a lot of description and a little more dense writing probably isn't always the best to translate into audiobook form, mainly because it's not super fast paced. And honestly, I found myself zoning out many, many times. I don't remember much of what happens in this middle section here. So that's a little irritating, but I feel like giving this a rating based on that experience probably isn't fair because from what I did hear, I really, really liked the writing and I thought there were some interesting characters. I don't want to rate this at this point because I felt like I missed out on half of the story. At some point in the future, I will be giving this one a reread. I also ended up reading two of the short stories from the complete Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I read The Adventure of a Scandal in Bohemia and The Adventure of the Red-Headed League. I haven't actually rated the story individually because I haven't added them uh, to my Goodreads but I think I'd give them like a four to five stars honestly. I really really enjoy the Sherlock stories. So good. Amazing. It's Sherlock Holmes like. Next I read Magic Study by Maria V. Snyder, the sequel to Poison Study which I read a year to two years ago. That gap was probably a little bit too long because when I started the book I was a little confused about everything that had happened. I had to look up a summary of what did happen in Poison Study because I'd kind of forgotten uh, a lot about it. So it was a little bit slow going when I first started it but when I did get back into that groove I really started enjoying myself. Things get pretty intense for our main character in this book and there's a lot of characters who I'm just like do I trust? Do I not? trust. I really like that aspect because you're just constantly questioning everything they do. So yeah, I ended up really, really enjoying this one. A four out of five stars and I'm definitely looking forward to continuing on with Fire Study. I'm not going to make the same mistake, so I'm probably going to pick it up sooner. <laughs> then I have Saga Volume 4 by Brian K. Vaughan. You guys are well aware of this series, I am sure. I'm giving this one a four and a half out of five stars. I just, I need more. Like these end when you really do need to know what's gonna happen next but we don't have the next installment yet and what what am I supposed to do? I also listened to the audiobook of City of Glass by Cassandra Clare, the third book in the Model Instrument series and this one I gave about a three out of five stars. I did quite enjoy the story and there were some characters which I liked but for the most part I found the characters quite infuriating and unlikable. A lot of the things that Clary but also Jace does just really really irked me. For Jace in particular I kind of understood why he did certain things but I didn't like the way he went about it but then with Clary it was just I also didn't particularly like the narrator of the audiobook, unfortunately. For the most part it was okay, but the, the main thing that really did irk me was the way that Isabel's dialogue was voiced made her sound so ditzy and dumb, and 
She's not really like that. It just, it didn't fit and that really irritated me. But yeah, at this point, I'm taking a break from the model instruments. I'm going to be reading the rest of the Infernal Devices and maybe sometime in the future, I'll continue with four, five and six in the series. But at this point, I need a break from infuriating characters. I don't have to like a character. There are plenty of stories where I've read really unlikable characters, but I was able to empathize with them and truly understand them. And that made them much more interesting, but it wasn't the case with this book, unfortunately. So I just, I need a break. And the last book that I read in May was Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I do not know where to start <laughs> with this book. I, do, I, do, I just don't have the words at this point. Like I've, I've already started trying to collect my thoughts so I can film a review of this one while it's still fresh in my mind. This, this last part here, wow, 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 wow. Basically it's about two sisters who are princesses, a god and an immortal. And in this world, there is this really unique form of magic. It's called biochromatic magic. Everyone is born with breath and that is like their source of magic basically. And it kind of draws upon colors to really get its power and it's able to bring things to life. This was a really, really, really good book. I didn't even, oh gosh. I loved the characters and I loved the world. I actually don't know what else to say apart from I need the next book now and there's no publication date for it, I don't think, because the ending, mm -hmm. five stars. I'm going to stop there because I, I cannot do the word thing with that book at the moment. So that is it for my May wrap up. I am thrilled with how much I ended up reading throughout the month. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned in this video. That's all. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye.